Here we are at the uh, third lesson of Except Ye Become As Little Children, speaking of the kingdom of, he of God, heaven and the kingdom of God, an entrance into that kingdom. Let's go to 1 John 3, 18 to 24. My little children, let us not love in word, but let us love in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. You could also translate that and knows the motivations of our heart. For uh, Hebrews 4 and 12 says he is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents or the intentions, the attitudes of the heart. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we shall receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave commandment. Notice that the commandment that he gave us is very concise and very simple. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he has given. There are many who are talking about doing certain things and having certain, uh, understanding certain doctrines. But folks, this is a relationship. It's a relationship based in love. It's a relationship based in that interrelating between he and I. And it's very, very important that we put the relationship first, not the doctrines and not the rules people are trying to put on us. Because love, believing in him and loving one another are the bottom line commandments, the base commandments for this age. We can do all the other stuff but if those two aren't in place, I'm not sure where we're going to be. And we're talking now, our, our series is on entering the kingdom as little children. So we're not talking here about salvation. We're talking about entering the kingdom of God. Here we are in 1 John 4, 4 through 9. Oops. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater. Our overcoming is because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now this scripture has been misused, it's been abused, but it doesn't change the fact that he is growing up in us. And he is greater. It is a growth process because Ephesians 4 says we grow up into him in all things. Now, if we grow in every one of those areas that he's dealing with us about, it's a growth process growing up into him who is the head in all things. But him growing up in us becomes greater and greater and greater as he, he allows things to come before us in which he wants us to manifest his greatness and grow up into his greatness. They are of, of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God hears us. He that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. There's a, a phenomenal amount of teaching in the, that sixth verse. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Let me say this, I cannot truly love, especially the agape level, the highest level of love. I cannot truly love unless I am born of God, unless God 
shows me how to love. Because with each one, there is a key. And so, the way you love one person is not necessarily the way the other one will understand or grasp that you love them. And so God must give you a key of love for every relationship you have. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was the man was manifest the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. We have a totally different line of approach than most folks. Not because of what we know, but because of who we know. And we live through him. In, we, in him we live and move and have our being. God wants to bring us to that place where in every area of our life we live and move and have our being in Him and that's how we live through Him. Now in John 4, 10 through 15, here in His love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And I think we need to begin to pray more and more into this. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is being perfected in us. That is present progressive tense. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he's given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And I think sometimes we put too many methods on this confession in the end time and when the judgment comes i think we're going to be surprised who's there and we may well be surprised who is not there that we thought ought to be there but here is the bottom line whosoever shall confess that jesus is the son of god god dwelleth in him and he in god that produces love in us for each other 1 John 14, 16 to 21. And we have known and believed that God hath loved us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in, God, in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. And our prayer needs to be, Lord, teach me how to dwell in love. Teach me how to dwell in love. I don't know how to dwell in love. Hereby in is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, and I often say, and I don't think it does any damage to the spirit of this word, because as he is in us, so are we in this world. Therefore there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear has torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. This, again, needs to be a point of prayer. Lord, Lord, bring me to that place of perfect love so that there is no fear in me. I want to be made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If any man say, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how shall he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. These are foundation for kingdom entering. Remember at the beginning of this passage, it said little children. Little children. This is the foundation. The child loves he doesn't ask why and you have to in one sense destroy his love for you somehow breaking his trust a child trusts and we need to come to that place where we trust our father 
So let's look at verse 8, First uh, John 5, 18 to 21. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one toucheth him not. Again, we're going back to this habitual sinning, this purposeful sinning. And, and he that is born of God let him go there. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Let me go back for a moment and tell you of an experience that I had back in the early 70s when I was uh, pastoring a little home group uh, that God was raising up and uh, I went through an extremely difficult time of depression and uh, there were a number of events that had shaken the group to its core and so I'm in what we have for a meeting room and I'm flat on my face before God saying God I don't understand you know all the whining we do when we're children or as little kids or as those who don't understand of course I know you don't but I did, and I guess there are some days I still do. God's still working on that. But as I said that, and I was shaken to the core, I think it was uh, when the, the major portion of the group had walked away from us, and I said, God, I don't understand. I don't know what I know. I don't know what I don't know. And the Spirit of the Lord came into the room, and he said, I want you to study what I say you know. And he took me to this passage in First John. And we know. And we know. And we know. And I said, okay, God, I'm going to confess what you say I know, even though experientially it's not fully in my conscious on the conscious level but my spirit knows these things would you work those things out in me so that as you do that there is a confidence in you that cannot be shaken there's a trust in you that cannot be shaken and then of course you know as we're thinking about it in these days and we're looking at this series on the kingdom that's part of becoming a little child so I can enter the kingdom. These thoughts and these studies are awesome and have really done a work in me and they're things that I'm praying into. Here we are at the end of this short series, these three lessons. And here's our contact information. If you have any questions, email me at Dr. William J. Her uh, Dr. WJ Hurst at gmail.com and the reason I would like them emailed is that I can answer you line for line and not miss any question you ask. If you need to write me by snail mail, the address is there. Or you can go to uh, or and you can go to our webpage and there you'll find product, you'll find uh, CDs, DVDs available and courses. Uh, that are, of course, textbooks that I have written available to you. Uh, and you'll also find a donate button. And uh, we just encourage you to give uh, as the Lord enables you to do that so that we can continue uh, putting up these lessons and uh, continue spreading this gospel, teaching all nations the practical word of God and mentoring students one student at a time. May God bless you as you search the scriptures to see if these things be so.